my girlfriend Sarah, every time she starts a video, goes, hello, my, no, how does she do it? Hello, my loves. And I felt like I wanted to say that. Hello, my loves. It has been an eternity, at least it feels like for me, since I've posted a video. I always did Monday, Wednesday, Friday for years. And then after CJ was born, I did once a week. And now I think it's been like four, maybe five weeks by the time I get this up. I've been filming. I have a video from March, a Q&A, that I have half edited. It's been crazy. But the reason the last three-ish weeks have been crazy is because COVID finally hit the Clawson household. I swear I thought we either were exposed and never got symptoms or if we were going to be immune to it. Like the last three standing people on earth that somehow escaped getting it. Nope, we got it. It's so interesting that each one of us got vastly different symptoms and most importantly, what the baby experienced. Just so you guys know, if you have a young one, especially an infant, what COVID was like with the baby. So if you're interested in where we've been, in our experience with the virus, and especially the baby's experience, then please keep watching. I'm gonna start with this detail. I don't know if this is part of the virus, but it was right in the time frame, so we'll add it in. Adam had gone to work one day and he came home. We were going to the park for a workout. We're in the car. He's driving. I'm not. That's important because I started to get a really bad headache to the point where I knew it was going to turn into a migraine because my vision started to get blurred. So we went to the park. We worked out. A workout for me will help get rid of a headache a little bit. But the minute we got home, my headache just kept getting worse and worse and worse throughout the night that by like 7.30, 8 o'clock, I was like, I'm going to bed because there's nothing I can do for this except sleep it off. So that's it. Woke up the next morning with a slight headache, much, much, much better than it was. And I took CJ for a nice long walk and it kind of just made it disappear. I don't know if it was the fresh air. I don't know if it was the sun. I don't know if it just wore itself off. But that evening, Adam came home from work and he's like, how bad was your headache last night? And I said, oh, it was pretty bad. It was a migraine. I know because my vision was blurred. He said, I have one that's really bad. And so I was like, listen, I'm going to take CJ. We'll go to the store. We needed some groceries. We needed some stuff for dinner. You just relax and we'll be back. He laid on the couch. By the time I got back, he was in bed sleeping. This is six o'clock at night. And he stayed in bed through the night, slept through the night, got up the next morning. And he sounded like he had a frog in his throat when he woke up and he was getting a little bit congested. He's like, I feel okay, but like I just have a frog in my throat. And something in my head was like, headache, frog in his throat, a little congestion. God, I hope he wasn't exposed to COVID, but it like went, the thought went in and went out at the same time. I was fine. My headache was gone. I was great. The baby was great. The following day, frog in his throat was worse and his congestion was really bad and he started to get a cough. And he was supposed to meet somebody for lunch that day. And I was like, listen, why don't you just text her and give her the option? Tell her, listen, I'm not feeling so great. I think I have a cold. I would still love to meet you if you're into it. If not, I totally understand. We'll reschedule when I'm better. Because my friend used to do that to me. Like when I had plans with my best friend in New Jersey, she would just text me and be like, listen, the kids have a little bit of a cold. I would still love for you to come, but I just want to put it out there. Then I would have other friends who would drop their kids off with strep throat and be like, they just woke up with a sniffle today. And then I would get it. If I got it and I was in control, my friend told me I decided to go, then it was on me if I got sick. But if my other friend dropped off the kids with strep and I didn't know it and I get strep, I'm going to be pissed at her. That's not fair. Don't put somebody in that position. You don't know if I have big plans. You don't know if I'm going to be around somebody else and you're getting me sick. Not cool. So he did that. She was like, no big deal. My kids have the same thing right now. It seems like everybody has something and they were just careful when they went out to lunch. So he came back from that probably three in the afternoon and he was hit for the rest of the day. His back was killing him. His ankles were actually swollen, telling that for a reason, very congested. The cough started getting really productive. The headache was bad and he didn't do much the rest of the afternoon. The following day was a Friday. He's still feeling pretty miserable, really congested. Now, now when his cough would get productive, he would have to like bend over to cough it out. CJ falls asleep for his morning nap and he slept for hours. And unfortunately, we don't have a baby that sleeps for hours and it was like strange. So we just kept going in there to check on him, making sure he was okay. I'm like maybe he's just going through a growth spurt. Who knows what it is. He got up from his nap hours later. He was hot, took his temperature. It's a close to 103. 
I think that that's like take him in to be seen temperature. I Googled it. It said over 102.2. I texted my sisters. They were like, yeah, over 102. We hear is bad. Come to find out it's a little bit higher than that. And we'll get there in a minute. But we took him in. We were on our way to go to the ER. I couldn't think of anywhere else. Oh, I did call his pediatrician. They couldn't get him in. We're on our way. We were going to go to the hospital where I had him, which is like seven minutes from the house. And my girlfriend at work texted me. She had a question and we're friends as well. So I was like, I'm so sorry. I'm not in front of my computer. We're taking CJ to the ER. And she said something about urgent care. And I'm like, oh my God, that's so smart. Then I don't have to expose him to things in the ER. It could probably go quicker. So on our way, we Googled an urgent care. And there was, we were like a couple miles from a pediatric urgent care. What I didn't realize at the time was it was like right on the edge of town where it gets kind of shady and it was an urgent care slash clinic and it wasn't the best place we could have taken him. But at that point we just wanted him to be seen. So we got in, they had us in the waiting room for like 45 minutes to an hour. Even though we were the only ones there, I think it was lunchtime. It was just like an odd timing that we got there. So we finally get in, they took a flu test up his nose and made his nose bleed, poor baby. But I mean, I'm, I wasn't mad about it. It's just that that's what happens. I mean, it could happen. At that point, we're waiting for the doctor to come in. The doctor finally comes in maybe 10 minutes later. He tries to get his, take the stethoscope, get his breathing on his back, his front. He tries to see in his ears and down his throat, up his nose. CJ isn't having it. He's fighting him off of him. The doctor barely gets the stethoscope on him does not even look in his mouth or his ears and he's like it's an ear infection I think his ear is a little red I'm gonna prescribe such and such antibiotic he'll be good in a couple days so we're like all right thanks we walk out of there and I said to Adam I am not confident in that diagnosis he didn't even look in his ear I was holding CJ to my chest to try to make him stop squirming I saw him not put the thing in his ear let's just watch him we'll keep giving him PDLA like they said we'll keep giving him they told us to alternate Tylenol and Motrin to keep the fever down we'll do that and if by tomorrow or the next day he, he has like you know bright green mucus dripping out or he's tugging on his ear because he hadn't touched his ear once now I know all this I mean I've been around babies just not my own baby for ages this is Friday and as this is all going on I knew I was coming down with something I could feel it in my throat I could feel it in my chest but the minute Adam started with the congestion I started taking zinc that is like my fail safe to keep my immune system up. Now, it was still cool enough in Las Vegas to keep the windows all open, but it was very, very, very windy. And when it's windy in Las Vegas and you have the windows open, it brings a lot of dust in the house from like the mountains and the sand and you guys know. So I was trying to convince myself that it was just my allergies, but it was in my chest, it was in my throat and like kind of behind my nose. I wasn't, there wasn't anything leaking, like no congestion like that. So we all go to bed kind of early. Adam still feels like crap. CJ's just wanting to kind of sleep and not wanting to eat anything, not wanting to drink anything. We go to bed around like 8, 8.30. I wake up like 10, 30, 11 with the absolute worst body aches in my legs and my lower back. Like the only way I could describe it is flu aches, like body aches, not like workout aches, like uh, like restless legs when you're pregnant, like sciatic pain, but all through your legs, it's not, it's not sciatic nerve. And it just, it was for me, it was in my quads and in my IT band, which is down the side of your leg. And it was excruciating. And I got up and I like rummaged the house and I found the Motrin that I was prescribed after having the baby. So it's like the high dose Motrin, I think Motrin 800. And I took one because I was in that much pain, went back to sleep, woke up the next morning and all three of us were just hit. Adam kept saying it's just a cold and I was like, it's definitely more than a cold. I've never gotten body aches like this from a cold. Like we quarantined, we weren't going anywhere anyway. I was gonna cook chicken soup for me and the baby. Adam was just gonna eat chicken cause he's not a big fan of soup. But I didn't even have the energy to stand up and chop vegetables at that point. We ordered hot and sour because that's my dad's remedy for a cold. Eight, went to bed early. The next morning, Adam felt a ton better. The baby was a little bit better. I went to go hand Adam the baby cause I'm like, I have to go to the bathroom. And my arms, like I felt like I was gonna drop the baby and I had the same aches, aches that I had in my legs in my arms. I'm telling Adam, I'm like, it's so bizarre. It moved to my arms, go to the bathroom, come back. And I'm like, I'm hit. And he's like, what do you mean? I'm like, I got the chills. I was getting hot and cold flashes and my arms are, I can't even describe the soreness and the weakness. So we just kind of laid around again. We're like, let's go for a walk. So we go for a walk and not a long walk, maybe a quarter of a mile, maybe half a mile. And as I'm pushing up a little hill, 
I felt like I was walking through mud. I didn't have like breath. And now I have like that frog in my throat voice, but no congestion at all. So it was just body aches, a frog in my throat, a teeny touch of a sore throat, but that's it. Adam felt much better, but still very congested. The next day was Monday. Adam went to a meeting. CJ finally, for the first time, was taking bottles. They told us it didn't matter that he wasn't taking formula as long as we could get him to take sips of water and tried to get him to take Pedialyte. Sips of water he was doing. He was doing some like watermelon purees, which I kept very liquidy. So I knew he wasn't dehydrated. They told us what to look out for. That was on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, no formula. Monday, I got him to take two separate bottles of formula. Every time he took them, he had diarrhea immediately. That was Monday. So I was like, oh, maybe it's just like working itself out and he's done. We, oh, I guess I should add, we all did get a stomach issue with this on different days, but like on the same day of the virus. So let's say Adam had his stomach issue day two. I'm just making it up. I don't remember what day it was. I had my stomach issue on day two because we were all like a couple days apart. CJ had his stomach issue. The next day from the minute he woke up, cried, did not want to be put down, was just not himself. He just wanted to nurse, but he wasn't even really drinking. It was more just pacifying nursing. And he woke up with a dry diaper, which he's never done before. So all of these things were just too much. I gave him Motrin around nine in the morning. Cause I'm like, maybe whatever pain he's in, I can get that down. Cause he didn't have a fever at that point, but I can get that pain down and I can get him to at least eat. And maybe that'll make him feel better. Didn't work. So Adam's at his meeting still and I texted him I'm like listen call me as soon as you're done with your meeting I think we have to take him to be seen again he's really not doing well he's not himself like I'm nervous he didn't even have a wet diaper and he's not drinking not even water at this point he called me immediately he's like I'm just walking out of my meeting I'm coming home we'll take him in call our regular pediatrician and they had an appointment in like two hours but in a different office with a different doctor it's just the practice we go to I like shower really quick. We take the baby there. We get them all checked in. They got us in the room pretty quickly. And then they forgot about us. Literally forgot about us. Now, sign on the door <laughs> kind of screwed us. The sign on the door in the office said something along the lines of, listen, it might take us a little longer with certain patients. We can't predict when we make the appointment times what child's gonna need more attention, what parent's gonna have more questions, who we're gonna need to spend more time with. So please don't come out and complain that we're taking too long. Basically have some respect because one day that can be you and your child. I see that sign after like 40 minutes because now we're starting to get like a little antsy. He's, the baby's screaming. Adam had to take a couple of work calls, got him to nap on me. He slept for like another hour. Here we are in this room going on three hours. Adam's like, I'm going to say something. He goes to say something and they're like, what? We had you guys checked out. Excuse me, what? <laughs> they forgot about us. The only thing now looking back that I could piece together is that when I went to go sign in the book, when we first got there, it was the person in front of us, the child's name was Christian as well. So it was Christian, whatever their last name is. And then the next line is Christian Clausen. So I'm like, maybe they just checked out the Christian and it was the wrong one. They're coming in being profusely apologetic. I, I wasn't even mad. Like we weren't mad at that point. We're just like, is the doctor still here? The baby needs to be seen. There were points during those three hours. I'm like, if the baby didn't need to be seen so bad, I would have left. Just like, I don't want to see your doctor at this point, but he needed to be seen. Now they're giving us white glove treatment. Like three separate office people came in. Here's your, here's my card. If you guys need anything whatsoever, just let us know. We got you calls anytime, day and night. Of course, they're worried about their negative review. I don't feel like it's necessary to leave a negative review for them. Who I do feel it's necessary to leave a negative review for is the people at urgent care who completely misdiagnosed him without even looking in his ear, prescribed an ear infection where my mama gut, you guys, this is the take home for this whole entire video. Follow your mama gut because something else happened. But my mama gut said, this is not right. There were bells going off. And I wish in that moment I spoke up, but that's where I was doubting myself because I'm like, I'm a first time mom. Like, I don't know these things. I knew, knew, knew 100% my baby did not have an ear infection. I am so grateful that I did not start that antibiotic. But the whole point is they let us leave that office contagious with COVID that's who I feel the need to leave a negative review for. The ones that forgot us for three hours, meh, it's an inconvenience. We had nothing else going on the rest of the day. It was annoying. It was frustrating. I could forgive that. So the doctor comes in, asks for the symptoms. I give him the whole rundown, okay? 
let me just remind CJ's fever started on Friday, Saturday, Sunday. It wasn't until Monday that he had diarrhea. And he's like, well, there was a stomach virus going around, so he probably has the stomach virus because you were tested for the flu, it's not the flu. I'm like, that's, in my head, I'm like, that's not. How do you have a stomach virus? A, a stomach virus comes in hard and fast, and your first symptom typically is vomiting or diarrhea. It is not four days later. I've never heard of this. He would have at least been gagging, vomiting something. He's about to leave for the day and he's like, you know, let's just test him for COVID. Why not? Just in case. Now, in my opinion, because they were giving us white glove treatment, right? Because they left us in the office for three hours. Let's just give them soup to nuts. Let's just make them feel completely, completely 100%. We don't want a negative review from these people. Otherwise, I don't know that he would have tested him. I'm hoping he would have. He's like, it's 10 minute in office. Sorry, it's another 10 minutes, but let's just do it. We're like, yeah, of course. Now I'm piecing everything together. I'm like the way the symptoms came in, the way that they're all so different for us, the body aches, Adam's congestion and cough. As he walks away, I'm like, I think it's COVID. Comes back, I hear him outside the office confirming like, oh, it was the diarrhea that made me test. You said stomach virus, but okay. Now he's like standing, like pulling his mask up, like standing away from us. He asks Adam and I if we want to be tested. And we were like, no thanks. It was $40 for each of us to get tested. I'm like, that's $80. Adam's the one that started this. We knew we had it. It's a five day quarantine from the day you were diagnosed. So we just went home. We quarantined through Memorial Day weekend. Now, Friday overnight into Saturday is when my symptoms started. The following Thursday, I lost my taste and my smell. So that's what I'm saying. It's so different for everybody. Like a lot of people, the only symptom or the first symptom they get is losing their taste and their smell. Adam didn't lose his. So for Adam, it came in really hard and it came in fast and he got rid of it pretty fast. For me, it was slow and I didn't have terrible symptoms, but it lingered, lingered, lingered. And then I got, I lost my taste and my smell. I never got congestion. What I did get was pressure. My ears felt like I had been underwater and like behind my sinuses. I could have mistaken it for a sinus infection. That's what it felt like. Tons of pressure in my ears and behind my nose, but I couldn't get much of it to come out. I think it was Friday, Saturday, Sunday that I had zero taste and smell. And I realized it because Adam had gone, now he's through quarantine. So he had gone somewhere. And when he came back, he was like, Ooh, you stink to CJ. I had no idea CJ had a stinky diaper. So I knew something was up. Then I went to go wash my hands and I absolutely loved the smell of our hand wash and I didn't smell it at all. So I knew something was off, but I'm just trying to ignore it and take care of the baby. That night I went to go take a shower. I accidentally bought like a really musky smell. Really, really musky. Musty, M musky, what's the word? Musky. So like it smells like men's cologne almost. And I still use it because it feels so good on my skin, but the smell of it, like I'm not the biggest fan. I didn't smell it at all. And I realized it as I'm washing myself, I'm like, oh my God, I don't smell it. Let me get some more. I got some more, smelled nothing. The stuff I put in my hair has a very strong scent. Nothing. Went to go wash my hands, nothing. So I come out of the room and I tell Adam, I'm like, I completely can't smell anything. And he's like, what made you realize it? And I went through the process of like the diaper and the hand soap and the shower, blah, blah, blah. Let me tell you guys, that is the weirdest thing in the whole entire world. I had zero appetite. I didn't want to eat anything because you can taste if something is sweet. You could taste if it's bitter. You could taste if it's salty and probably sour. I just didn't have anything sour, but you can't taste flavors. So I personally didn't want to eat because there's just, to me, there was no point. So I would get to the point where I was so weak and hangry. I'm like, oh, I guess it's time to eat. But there's like no joy in eating. And I looked it up and it could last for 80% of people, one to four weeks. And then another 10%, so 90%, like another 10%, it could last up to six months. I was like... What is life without food? Thank God by Monday, I could start to smell a little. I could taste little bits. It comes and it goes. It's weird. I can taste more than I can smell right now, which sounds backwards. <laughs> this whole thing has been backwards for me. Today is also the first day I woke up without feeling like I have so much pressure in my head. I did take Mucinex for the past two days. I don't know if that helped. I mean, I really haven't been blowing my nose any more than I was before, but I don't know if that helped drain what was trapped in there. Adam's doing a lot better. He still has a little bit of residual congestion and a little bit of a residual cough, but basically he's back to normal. And CJ refuses, 100% refuses to take a bottle, but everything else is back to normal. So I'm thinking maybe he lost his taste and his smell as well. And he obviously can't tell us that, he can't speak, but I'm assuming 
that's why he was just really funny with food. He will take yogurt, but it's like a texture thing I'm thinking for him because all of his food and his purees are so bland anyway, and he just loves yogurt. So what I've been doing is I'm mixing very, very, very liquidy watermelon puree into his yogurt to get him some hydration and he'll take a little sips of water. And the doctor told us, just so you guys know, 25 minutes later, sorry, I thought this was gonna be quick and I just wanted to get into our symptoms so you know how vastly different they were different they were from one another so you know what to look out for. If he didn't even have congestion, one night I had to use the Freedom Mom Snot Sucker, it's like the best thing ever, and we got a decent amount out once, that was it. And I think that was like a lot of crying involved. My sister's baby had COVID, I can't remember if it was three weeks or three months, I wanna say, around maybe she was four weeks she was very very young and she said all she had was just like a little bit more congestion so thankfully the littles aren't getting it so so bad at least the cases that have been in my life we did not get a terrible case thank god on memorial day because we were all the way beyond our quarantine time but i still had no taste and smell and like that pressure behind my face in my face but the doctor said only five days from cj's test which was tuesday so we were way beyond we were about a weekend we did the murph workout it's like the big crossfit workout every memorial day it's a tribute to a fallen soldier michael murphy and it's a mile run 100 pull-ups 200 push-ups 300 squats and then another mile run i knew from the first mile run i was going to be in trouble the pull-ups push-ups squats i just felt so much pressure in my head so hard and then the second mile run actually my legs started cramping i would have stopped if adam wasn't there to kind of like coach me through that whole thing it was hard in years past taking us between 38 and 42 minutes it took us 57 minutes but we kept having to stop pick up cj and it was just like a slow grind and that was tough that was probably stupid but i mean we did it after the fact it helped i came home i slept for a couple hours and then i woke up feeling like things were draining so i don't know maybe that helped me i'm not sure tylenol and motrin alternating to get the fever down 104 is what they told us at the urgent care is when you need to like get seen immediately 105 is er somebody had suggested putting the baby in a bath and thank god i said that to my best friend and she was like not a cold because i was like put him in a cold bath she's like not a cold bath a cold bath can put them in shock because they're going from really hot to too cold you want a lukewarm bath i was afraid of dehydration so they said you know the baby was interactive he wasn't lethargic they could pull his skin and it bounced right back he was happy more than 12 hours with a dry diaper is when you need to take them in. So those were the few things that I remember. And the Freedom Mom Snot Sucker, I think it's called. Snot Sucker, I think it's called. Yeah, they have the cutest names for things. Is a lifesaver for this kind of stuff. Oh, and say, Baby Saline, I use the Frida one as well. Those were really the big things. And just lots of rest, lots of fluids if you can. They said Pedialyte, he won't take it. And I understand it's very syrupy and CJ does not like anything sweet. So water. If your baby's over six months, of course. If they're under six months, definitely. I, I, I don't know. The answer is please go to the doctor. That was our experience and that's where we've been. So it's been a kind of a slow grind at the Clawson house, getting better, trying to fit everything in. So I'm gonna try to get back to more regular videos. I'm gonna try to get this one up as quickly as possible. So pardon the long, maybe long-winded, not as edited, as fancy and fun as usual. I like watching people whose videos are more just real and natural versus overly edited anyway. So let me know in the comments what you guys think. What was your experience? If you had a bad case, what your babies had, if they got it. Anything else you wanna share with me? I love you guys so much and I will see you hopefully sooner than later in the next one. Mwah.